Today we'll look at an automatic transmission and see how it works. We're going to break it down to make it easy to understand. This model is a replica of the Allison 1000 6-speed transmission. There are three shafts in the transmission. They connect to each other in some way that allows the vehicle to move. Here is the input shaft, the intermediate shaft and the output shaft. The input shaft has power coming from the engine through the torque converter. The input shaft is always turning. The intermediate shaft does not turn automatically. It is not yet connected to the input shaft to transfer power. The output shaft is the same as the intermediate shaft. It won't move as well until it's connected to the input shaft in some way. But since the intermediate shaft and the output shaft connect, they essentially act as one unit instead of two. So instead of three shafts, we essentially have two shafts once set up. We'll start off with the planetary gear system. We have three parts of one planetary system. The sun, the planets, and the ring gear. They'll work together to produce certain gear ratios that deliver necessary speeds to your vehicle. Altogether, we'll have three planetary gear systems. They're called C3, P1 planetary, C4, P2 planetary, C5, P3 planetary. Now moving up, we've got the C1 and C2 housing. These are the clutch packs that function by connecting the housing to the input shaft. They are able to engage and disengage from the input shaft when needed. Covering the C1 and C2 housing is the rotating clutch module. It connects directly to the input shaft. It also connects to the sun gear of C3, P1 as they are splined together. The rotating clutch module will always rotate at the same speed as the input shaft. This will cause a rotating clutch module to spin the C3 P1 sun gear that will always rotate as well. Starting from neutral, we now shift into first gear. Here is a chart for the clutch application. To select gear 1, we have to engage C1 and C5. In order to do this, clutch packs are used. As you can see, the red clutch disc is splined to the input shaft. It can rotate freely with the input shaft. The silver discs are steel plates that are locked to the clutch housing. These will never rotate. We can see here that the C1 housing at this point is not rotating with the input shaft. The C1 clutch housing and the input shaft must rotate together to shift into gear 1. In order to engage C1, the clutches are applied and pressed together. This is done from a piston located next to the clutch packs. The piston will cause the steel plates to squeeze together and stop the red clutch disc from rotating. Now that the steel plates and red clutch disc are locked together, they'll now move as one unit. This in turn will force the C1 housing to rotate as the C1 housing is locked to the steel plates, which 
again are now locked to the red clutch disc. So now C1 is fully engaged and rotating. It's time now to engage the C5 P3 planetary system. We must keep the C5 ring gear stationary this time. This time the steel discs for C5 are spliced to the transmission housing. The C5 steel discs do not rotate. Using the clutch packs, the steel discs will close together and squeeze the clutch disc. Now the clutch packs are locked together here and will force the ring gear of C5 from rotating. This now locks the C5 P3 ring gear to the transmission housing. This completes first gear and now allows the output shaft to rotate and deliver speed to the wheels. The gear ratio for first gear is 3.10 to 1, meaning that the input shaft will turn 3.1 times to deliver one turn out of the output shaft. To move to second gear, we see that C1 and C4 must be applied which means the clutch packs from C5 must disengage and allow the wing gear from Planetary 3 to rotate freely again. We must now apply the clutch packs to C4 to stop the ring gear of the Planetary Gear 2 system from rotating. Now that the clutches for C4 are engaged, Planetary 2's ring gear is no longer rotating and is locked in place to the transmission housing. C1 is already engaged so no changes apply here. It'll continue to rotate now with C4 engaged. Notice that the sun gear of P2 and P3 are spline to the intermediate shaft. This allows for different gear ratios to deliver different speeds The gear ratio for second gear is 1.81 to 1. The input shaft will turn 1.81 times to deliver one turn to the output shaft. Third gear. We need to engage C1 and C3. We disengage the clutch pass from C4 and now engage the C3 Planetary 1 system. C1 still remains engaged. To shift to fourth gear, we need to engage C1 and C2. C2 clutch housing works as the same as C1. C2 is now rotating. This produces a direct drive, meaning that one turn of the input shaft will deliver one equal turn out of the output shaft. Fifth gear, we engage C2 and C3. Sixth gear, we engage C2 and C4. For reverse, we engage C3 and C5.
And lastly, we have Park. Only the C5 P3 system is engaged. The parking ball engages the C5 P3 system to stop the whole output from rotating. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit subscribe and like. Make sure to share this video. This is Automotive for Beginners, and we'll see you in the next one.